Hey guys, what's up? It's Riley and I am making an update video on my transition. So I don't know if you guys know, if you're following me on social media, that you will see that I have had my welcome workshop at the gender clinic. Didn't know that existed, but I don't know if that's just a thing at Northampton or elsewhere. I got invited to a welcome workshop. Now that workshop, they give you a leaflet, which I will show you. So this leaflet here tells you everything that you go through at the workshop. Uh, it gives you some helpful links and goes through everything about the service, the GP's involvement, what they're commissioned to do and what they're not commissioned to do, like preparing for your assessments, um, what happens at your assessment. So that gave me a lot of information for my first appointment. So my first appointment, I got the letter whilst I was there. They gave me this letter right here. Yeah, my address is somewhere. They gave me this letter right here and it says, bear in mind, I went on the 23rd of September to the welcome meeting that it says, dear Riley, your appointment has been arranged for you on Wednesday, the 25th of September at 9.30 at Gender Clinic with Dr. Sue Cotton. So yeah. I have a two days notice. I'm recording this on the 24th, so that means I've got my first appointment tomorrow. I was not expecting that. Everyone else in the room had like a month or so to wait, and mine was two days. So that means I had to get everything ready for my first appointment. And your first appointment you need to have ready. Let me get my list. So I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but I would imagine just if you're going by the NHS to transition then I'm sure it's very similar at every gender clinic so preparing for assessment you will be asked to provide the following life story slash gender autobiography I've never heard about this before I don't know if anyone else has had this but it's like a thing that kind of sets out your transition timeline so when you like were a kid and how you would feel when you were a kid how you felt when you were going through puberty blah 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 and you would write all about that so they can get an idea of when you come to terms with being trans since when was your dysphoria starting look at that and that gets attached to your file then a copy of deed poll slash passport slash name change if applicable so if you have actually changed your name then it says list of current medic medications previous treatments including physical health so say if you have had a surgery of any sort on like if you've broken bone or whatever else like medications for like mental health or medication in general for your physical health any re relevant information since referral so like if you've been seeing someone and then it's support networks you are involved with e.g online communities local groups families and friends so that's like your support network for whilst you're going through this because it's a big change everyone knows like Going on tea isn't so straightforward as everyone makes it out to be because you have a lot of things to consider, a lot of questions you might want to ask, which is also another thing. A list of the list of questions, things they want in advance for your first appointment. So some places will ask for blood tests for your first appointment, but at Northampton Gender Clinic they are asking for you to bring this list of these for your first appointment, and then on your first appointment after that they will. They will then assess you, then they will send a email to your GP requesting a blood test. So an overall blood test for everything. So hormone levels, all these bits and bobs that your blood test can show. If anything's wrong, anything wrong with your health, to see if where you're at. And then it says the consultations can include for your, like your first assessment or other assessments, exploration of gender identity and gender dysphoria, history and development of gender dysphoric feelings, the impact of stigma on mental health, the availability of support from family, friends and peers, physical health and physical examination. So physical examination is your second appointment. So I'm only going to my first appointment, but the second appointment that will be your physical. So you might be like, oh, what happens at a physical exam? Apparently, you don't have to take no binder off, nothing. Like, you just need to make sure 
it's just like skin level they check your your senses your your hair growth your skin they check your toe like your nails um they obviously check your your lungs and blah 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 they, they go through a extensive check so if anything happens during the time you get put on hormones then they can see your progress or your deterioration in a way so it's all there and outlined and you've got it in your medical history so what i got told with when they start you on hormones is they'll start you on gel i don't know if that's obviously the same for everyone or the same at the different gender clinics but they said they start people on gel because testosterone injections can cause well they can they can cause anything it depends on your body type but in the aspect of it takes longer to come out of your system so it can stay in your system for three months and if you have a really adverse effect to it then that would take longer to come out of your system system and it can cause a lot of health problems so they start you on gel and then they will start the injection see how well that goes so i guess probably start on gel first i don't know but that is what i got told so yeah really exciting news i have been starting to write my little gender autobiography i have two pages by the way but um it's a lot to write about especially if you have such a big history of when everything started and if you've been transitioning for a long time then there's a lot to write about but it's good to write everything down and then it's good to see where i've come from if that makes sense like it's took me a long time to get to where i am now and i have been waiting on the wait list since january of 2016 16 yeah january 2016 i've been on the waiting list still 17 2016. I need to check that because it's been a while. I remember. I know it's January of one year. January 2017, sorry. January 2017 is when I got referred, like when my referral was taken, sent off, and the gender clinic got it. I know that because I've been emailing the gender clinic since I sent off my referral, so I know where I am. And now it's my time. I'm at the top of the list. I have my first appointment tomorrow. Am I excited? Very excited. Am I nervous? Very nervous. Even just going to this welcome group workshop, that was nerve wracking. Being in a group full of like other trans people and a lot of them have gone private because they've been waiting so long and they have started tea or they've started estrogen and it's very weird being around people that are in the same position. Like I used to go to youth groups, but this was different. This was, we're all in it together. We've all got, you know, a process we're all going through together. And it was very nice to actually talk to some other trans people for once. Cause I don't, I don't really talk to that many trans people. I ha obviously work with a few trans people, but we don't talk about trans issues or anything like that. Cause we're trying to work. Like we can talk about it outside of work, but we don't tend to talk about it, you know? So yeah, your boy is going to become a man very soon.